let's go. So we have the picker wheel. And it's gonna be decided at random. I have all of the other eight classes, except for Sniper. We're gonna figure out who's first on the chopping block. Who's it gonna be? That is so ungodly fucking loud. Jesus, I need to mute the webpage. First up. I'm so sorry, that was so fucking, first up's Pyro. Okay, so we need to do some editing on the tier lists here. There will be an S, there will be an A, B, C, and D. And then we need to change this one to broken in that it's bad. Actually, what I'm gonna do for S tier is I'm gonna say that's broken, needs nerf slash rework. Actually, let's do, let's, let's all toss an E tier in there as well. Oh baby, we're in business. That fits like a fucking glove. Glove, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's, let's get one of the more novelty items out of the way first. Let's do the hot hand first. So the thing about the hot hand is that there's nothing wrong with it. And you're going to hear this a lot as I go through each of these tier lists. Just because an item isn't as good as its alternatives, its counterparts that are that, you know, perform better, either be it the stock weapons or the unlocks that are just objectively superior in terms of their performance. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad weapon. It just means that they have their own little niche slot that they perform the best in when you decide to use the item. It is effectively a gimmick weapon, right? It is a gimmick weapon. It, it doesn't really have any practical application because you have the weapon, you have the power jack, right? So if you need a speed boost to get from point A to point B, then you're gonna use the power jack all the time because you don't have to hit someone to get the speed boost. So the only practical application is completely overshadowed by the superior power jack. The other thing that I really don't like about this item is that it has its damage split between two consecutive attacks and not just one. So it already has a damage penalty for some reason, but then they decided to cut that down to 50% because you have to land both hits on somebody. It is, it is rapid succession between both swings, but you have to land both swings consecutively in order to get the full damage. And I, I think it was like, what, a 20% damage penalty? Something like that? It's a 20% damage penalty. So what is that? That's 13 damage. You're doing 52 damage per swing. It's not good. It's 26 damage per pop. So you're only hitting some for 26 damage in order to get out. So this weapon is firmly planted in its current state within the gimmick territory. It's just a silly, goofy item that you whip the fuck out. You just wanna be walking around, you just wanna be fucking bitch slapping people. That's all you're gonna be using this for. So just, just a disclaimer, the initial position of an item may not be its final position. So just, just bear that in mind. I'm putting the hot hand in E tier. Now let's do, hmm, let's do the stock flamethrower. I am of, I'm of the belief that the stock flamethrower is objectively always the best flamethrower option for pyro you have no damage penalties air blast is always insanely good you're not penalized for using it in any capacity like you are with the back burner or the degreaser or you don't have it at all with the flog and i'll get a little bit more into it when i talk about the degreaser especially when it comes to weapon switching speed let's talk about air blast for a minute a lot of people complain about air blast as a mechanic in the game a lot of people complain how it can completely stuff an uber a lot of people complain about how reflected projectiles are a mini crit and you can get a one-shot kill and a lot of people complain how it can just knock players around in general and i understand that sentiment it sucks because all the, all the pyro has to do is mindless hold down mouse two and completely just just remove an uber it's its effect is not even there especially if it's on a projectile based class if it's like a soldier being ubered or a demo man being ubered all the pyro has to do is just hold down mouse two and completely shut them down so something that i think would be a cool change to air blast to make it slightly less aggravating to fight against when you're ubered is to give uber charged players like a 50 percent knockback resistance to air blast like they can still be pushed a little bit but not pushed all the fuck away right they can't like be air blasted off a cliff as easily 50 percent may not be the right amount 
And listen, any balance change that I suggest is not the end all and be all, uh, and, all right? Because people like to get very upset when I suggest a balance change. People get very, oh, Zesty's not in. He made, he made a balance. He said, this is a good idea or this is a bad idea. And I'm going to berate him for it. These are just suggestions and just ideas that I have floating around in my head. That's it. And I also think it's fine. Controversial opinion. I understand. I also think it's fine that air blasted projectiles deal mini crits for several reasons one you need pretty good timing in order to actually pull it off right you have to be able to readily predict when someone is going to fire their weapon and if you fuck up you get fucking killed you fire off your air blast you have that delay between when you can do it again and you just get shot unless you swap to a secondary and start trying to do damage that way but then you just get fucked by the projectile anyway and even then it's not a guaranteed one shot kill on the person you reflected it back at especially if they're at greater range away from you right if they reflect a projectile on your decent amount of distance away as either a soldier or a demo man you can still dodge the reflected projectile relatively easily the further you are away if you're right next to a pyro, like right in front of somebody, you're fucking, you know, then yeah, you're gonna die, right? But if you're already right in front of the pyro anyway, he's already gonna be doing such a massive amount of damage to you with his flamethrower that the reflected projectile, you're still gonna take a similar amount of damage. Yeah, I think air blast is largely fine. You know, it requires timing. It has limited range. You have to predict when someone's gonna fire a projectile. This isn't a hit scan mechanic, by the way. I think air blast is fine. Aside from the fact it can completely stuff out of stock Uber, you can use the quick fix. The quick fix has 100% knockback negation, making air blast effectively useless. But the other downside about that is that the flamethrower also reduces healing by a significant amount. If you have, if you're playing as Pyro and you see a quick fix Uber, all you have to do is be hitting them with the, with your flames, and they and they can't heal it effectively negates all healing bonus from a quick fix uber and i think that's a little bit broken fun fact if you're taking afterburn damage a level one dispenser will not heal you i think that change to the flamethrower when it reduces healing from healing sources i think that's a little broken i it's really it really, it really does suck that's another aspect that i think i would like to see changed is to make it so that it doesn't drastically reduce the amount of healing you get from healing beams not all healing sources just healing beams dispensers and beams, and also the payload cart yeah i think that's all the thoughts i have to say about the flamethrower I, largely by and large best option i think it's mostly fine couple of small tweaks to it and then it's it's like in a perfect spot so a couple of small tweaks that i think would actually be really cool is they should make the flames a little bit more transparent so you can see what you're doing otherwise you either flashbang yourself or flashbang the enemy team and it's awful and something else i would like to see is uh slightly team colored tinted flames like blue pyros have slightly blue flame and red pyros have slightly red flame that would be good too because like if you're just seeing spurts of fire coming out of a flamethrower and you can't see the pyro behind it because the flames are blocking the pyro's player model you can't tell where those flames are coming from if you're seeing flames coming around a corner, you can't tell what they're coming from, either friend or foe. So I think they should team color the flames so you can tell where the flames are coming from. That would also be a very welcome change. I would love to see that. I think we hammered it out. We hammered out stock pretty well. I, th I think most people are kind of in agreement that you know, air blast needs a tweak. Flames are a little janky to see through, but by and large, the flamethrowers is pretty fine. That's the stock flamethrower. Let's move on to the next thing. Let's move on to the degreaser. Controversial slot for the degreaser, I'm sure. Let me explain why. The old degreaser was automatically up here. Like if, if you're playing with like like fucking 2000, like 13, 14 degreaser, you're you're up here, right? This this is where it used to be so fucking good, it needed to be adjusted. It was it was insanely good. But then they nerfed it, and now it's down here. And I think it's okay but it's worse than the stock flamethrower for a couple of reasons. One, less afterburn. One tick of damage on afterburn is fucking useless, right? It quadruples a player's survival time if they get hit by afterburn. Second thing, 
you have increased air blast cost now, right? You can only air blast, what is it, eight times instead of 10, right? It doesn't sound significant, but I do find myself getting caught out a lot because what most people use this for is for combo pyro, where they air blast somebody, do they do puff and sting, or they, they puff and go after them with an extinguisher or whatever melee of their choice, maybe a panic attack or a shotgun, right? You're using air blast a lot more often with this weapon because you really need to control the position of your target in order to follow up with your higher damage options because you sacrifice damage with this thing in order to be more effective with your combos in order to pull off combos faster right the problem with that and why i placed it in b tier is because they increase the universal switching speed of all weapons i've mentioned this before in a video so the switching speed between the degreaser and the stock flamethrower is incredibly small a lot less significant than it used to be so you can still pull off combo pyro fairly effectively with just the stock flamethrower without having to sacrifice afterburn damage or your number of air blasts you have at your disposal the only exception you guys are bringing it up in chat i see it there are two exceptions to this it's really good if you're whipping out a melee weapon it's still probably the better option overstock to whip out a melee weapon and do a melee combo or if you're using the panic attack with it. But the problem with that is that it changes the pyro from relying on his primary to mostly relying on his secondary weapon to deal damage. I think a pyro being overly reliant on his secondaries or melees to deal damage is not a good way to balance his primary weapons. His primary weapons should still be able to hold their own by themselves and not have to be continuously supplemented by his secondary and melee. I mean, good pyros mostly use their secondary more. See, I disagree. I think. A good pyro uses a really good mix of everything. A pyro, a good pyro knows when to combo. A good pyro knows when to hold down mouse one. Good pyro knows when to use his melee. It's never just sticking with one thing. It's using a combination of all of those things in order to be the best pyro you can. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pump it to A. I'm gonna put it in A tier because it's not it's not B tier. It is worse than the stock flamethrower. Like like it's better items are to the left. It is worse than the stock flamethrower, but it is still A tier. How's that sound? We'll keep it in A tier, but it is worse than the stock flamethrower. Final decision, moving on. Okay, let's get the fucking rain blower out of the way. I don't like the rain blower because, I mean, if you like Pyroland, then equip the rain blower, but it's just, if you want to distract yourself with rainbows and more flashy particle effects, then just that's the weapon for you. But why would I want to obscure my vision more and distract myself with more particles? I don't know. I'm, I, I, I never understood the appeal of Pyrovision. Oh yeah, I forgot the fucking Nostromo Napalmer. Um, yeah, it's it's the same thing as Stock Flamethrower. There's that. I mean, there is the little Little, there, there is the silly little gimmicky damage bonus you get if like if you have the full alien set for pyro and you're fighting against a scout that has the full alien set scouts have increased melee damage against pyros that are using this loadout and then pyros have increased flamethrower damage against scouts using the alien loadout i want a strange version of the nostromo napalmer i think it just looks cool if there was a strange version of the nostromo napalmer it, it would automatically be better than the stock flamethrower but since there's no strange version it's gonna be worse than the stock flamethrower i would love 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 a strange version of this weapon it's so fucking cool next 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 are there any more no there's no more stock flamethrower reskins so let's do eh, let's do stock fire axe all right eh stock stock melee on pyro is just really underwhelming yeah i consider it better than the hot hand because the hot hand always does less damage and the speed boost is pointless stock melee on other classes like demo man or sniper or scout they're all fairly good right or even heavy really you know unless you're using something like the kgb which i would consider a direct upgrade but that's for later if you if you're playing on a server with random crits yeah you can go for a free one shot kill whenever you want the damage isn't terrible it's 65 it's 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 good it's good, reliable damage. It's expected. You don't have to do any special gimmicks in order to get that damage, but it's not amazing in comparison to the Pyro's other melee weapons, right? Other melee options are either more fun or more effective, I would say. Okay, and then I'll put the fucking, I'll, I'll put Lolly Chop in the same because it's it's just the same thing, but it, it enables Pyrovision, and then you have all the same annoying particle effects. Actually, no, tier below, because I fucking, I don't like, I don't like Pyrovision, so I'm sorry that it's the same thing, but Pyrovision, so bleh. Let's talk about stock flare gun. Stock flare gun's an A tier. This weapon has been, I would say, the pinnacle of the of just the good pyro. If you're a pyro that can consistently land flares on your targets, 
You're a fucking monster. It's good with the stock flamethrower. It's good with the degreaser. It's it's just a really good and it's really fun. It's it's, it's a really satisfying weapon. It's really rewarding, right? You catch someone on fire, you whip out the fucking flare gun, you pop them for 90 damage, finish them off with flames or another shot, depending on what you're wanting to do. It's just an all around powerful tool in the pyro's arsenal. It doesn't force him to become overly reliant on it because its maximum damage is only 90 plus afterburn, right? So you have to be using your flamethrower often enough in order to get people on fire and deal enough damage so the follow-up shot will kill them if that's what you're going for. It's the weakest option if you're wanting to harass people at long distance. The detonator and the scorch shot are far better at doing that. As just like a raw damage output weapon for pyro, flare gun is fucking great. Is it better than the degreaser? I would say yes, it is. It's like it's it's like sandwiched in the middle between the stock flamethrower and the degreaser. I apologize for bringing back the topic of air blast, but do you think Demonite should get some knockback resistance, air blast resistance if you equip the booties? No, that makes a Demonite fucking invincible. The only thing that could counter a good Demonite is t landing your shots on a Demonite at his feet to pop him in the air so his charge gets fucked up, landing your constant stream of damage from a minigun or a sentry to slow him down, or Pyro's Air Blast. Fun story, by the way, the high GPS balance mod implemented a similar change to that where a Demonite wearing, I forgot what item specifically, I think they had to be full Demonite. They implemented that change to have knockback resistance against Pyro and it was fucking broken. Demonites could not fucking die. So if a Demonite gets all the heads he needs to have maximum health and maximum speed, they're fucking invincible because their effective health for both against like, you know, damage against fire and blast damage was like over 300, if not not more 400 400 on against, against fire if you're using the the charge and charge so they all they are already a massive damage sponge but then they can't be pushed around and knocked out of melee range and they have their their crit on demand mechanic it was fucking awful and i'm so glad they reverted that change demo knight should not have air blast resistance of any kind at all no why do they call it oven when you oven the cold food about how to eat the food i wish i knew man Anyways, let's move on. I don't know. Let, let's do the last basic bitch weapon. Let's do the extinguisher. The same, the postal pummel is the same thing. All right. So let's do the, let's do the extinguisher. Personally, for me, I like the extinguisher more than the power jack. I really enjoy the mechanic because it just makes a pyro stronger at close range, which is where he's supposed to be strong. But it's not insanely easy to pull off. You have to be practiced with it. You know, the longer you have someone set on fire, the more powerful the attack is because it, I have to word this correctly. It deals more damage based on how much afterburn is left. Alternatively, if you want to circumvent that downside altogether, you can just hit them with a flare gun shot and then hit them with the axe swing and then, ooh, max damage all the time, really fucking strong. But again, in order to do it, you have to take that risk of getting right next to somebody and hitting him with a swing. And if you fucking miss, you're probably gonna die. I would consider that fairly balanced. Old versions of this weapon, like the, the old original version of this weapon that just guaranteed, it was, it, it guaranteed a crit just on a burning target all the time. That shit was broken. <laughs> the current version I would say is probably the most balanced version of this weapon that we have received to date. Easily A tier, but at the lower end of A tier because the power jack exists. Power jack is probably the most basic bitch. So the best weapon for Pyro right now is the power jack. Jack. This weapon borderlines on being up here. It's almost needs a nerf territory. I can't, I cannot consider this weapon overpowered, but it's easily the best weapon in Pyro's arsenal, the Power Jack, hands down. Because you have an on demand speed boost that doesn't punish you unless you're getting shot while it's active. The number one challenge with Pyro is closing that distance. And every time you whip it out, you fucking zip to him and you fucking kill him honestly i think this needs a rework because it it does too much it, it has so much good shit going for it and not a strong enough downside the best thing about a movement based shooter is being able to move faster and if you can do it whenever you want you gotta have some kind of a downside to it i would not mind seeing this weapon experience some kind of a tweak i don't know what it, it needs to have a slightly more tangible punishment increased time to unholster it and get the positive effects it brings i think that wouldn't be a bad idea i think perhaps something that would be better is increase the deploy time so they have to commit 
to taking the melee out. That's not a bad idea. I kind of like that. In practice, don't know if that would work. Again, any suggestions I say, don't know if they're actually the best option. They may or may not be. Food for thought. Right, I'll, I'll let you guys pick the next one. What do I do next? Yeah, we'll do Neon Annihilator next. Neon Annihilator. I'm gonna put it in C tier. It sucks because it's situationally really good, but there are so few maps with water. But it does remove, it removes sappers, yeah? It removes sappers. If you want it to be a pie bro, right? If you want to be a pie bro, and you're not actively seeking out enemy buildings to kill, the Neon Annihilator is the better option because you can still remove sappers with it. And you have a lower damage penalty on it. You only deal 20% less damage instead of 25. I'm not saying, listen, 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 listen. I'm not saying it's better than the home wrecker. It's not. But I'm still saying that if you want to play Pi Bro and you don't want to have to fuck with enemy buildings, you don't want to have to worry about slightly less damage, and you want to have that situational crit someone when they're wet gimmick, then you can use this. And you can still be kind of effective with it. It has its uses, but does it mean it's as good as the home wrecker? No, it's not as good as the home wrecker. I'm just saying it has its uses. Otherwise, mediocre, but I still consider it more useful than the stock fire axe because you can remove sappers with it. It's so stupid. It's so stupid that the gas passer doesn't count as being wet. I don't understand why. Let's do the gas passer next. I fucking hate this thing. I don't know why they don't let this weapon make make players count as being wet. I don't understand why they didn't make that a thing so you could follow up with something like the Neon Annihilator and make it slightly more useful. It's just so... It's so bad. This weapon is so fucking horrible. And I still stand, and I will stand by it until the fucking cows go home, until the sun sets on the final day of humanity, that the gas passer has always been the worst item in the fucking game. It is so unimpactful. It has no fucking use. It does no damage. It takes so fucking long to charge the gas passer in order to even use the weapon. And then when you try to throw the fucking weapon, you could miss it entirely and not get anybody with the gas, or you can hit people with it. But if they're out of your range, right? If they're out of your range, you can't ignite them for afterburn. You have to rely on your team to do that. And even then it's only afterburn. They don't take like a shred of bonus damage at all. They just start taking afterburn and that's it. This is why I made a fucking video about this item because of how fucking terrible it is. Don't use this. Might as well not even, you may as well not have an item equipped in your secondary slot because of how fucking bad it is. The idea is cool. Yes, the idea is cool, but it fucking sucks. Oh, Zesty, what about man versus machine? It's really good in man versus machine. Oh, it's really good in man versus machine. Yeah, it's fucking busted in man versus machine, but beyond there, one, who plays MVM anymore? And two, who cares? It's man versus machine. You're not playing against actual players. They need to do something with this item. It desperately needs a change in order for it to be better inside of casual mode. One cool suggestion that I've seen is placing this item in Pyro's melee slot and letting him throw it and then follow up with a shotgun so we can set people on fire from a distance that way. That would be kind of cool. But at the same time, I think that'd be really broken because with bullet spread, you could just set a fuckload of people on fire with hit scan, you know, because a lot of people have also suggested as like a slight rework for the Hulong heater that it has like a, a tracer round once every X amount of seconds or once every X amount of shots that sets up a, that sets a player on fire. Imagine being able to set people on fire with hit scan that they're just instantly on fire against something they can't dodge or juke out like a flamethrower. I think that'd be a little bit broken. And I see I see someone mentioned the idea of a Molotov. I don't know if I like that idea. Area Denial is very strong in TF2. Pyro is very good at it at close range. That is, that's his main strength, right? Suddenly being able to chuck it down a corridor and then have it suddenly be engulfed in flame. I'm, I'm just thinking about how it works in CSGO, right? And imagine imagining that in CF2 where it catches people on fire and there's afterburn with it. Ah, I don't like that idea either. There needs to be a certain amount amount of work that goes into catching the target on fire after they throw it. Because I love the base concept of it being gas that has to have damage followed up with it to set people on fire. It needs some kind of a change. And I, I know that I'm not creative enough to come up with a good enough idea. It needs something, it needs something, but I, I just don't know what. But you know what's not a shitty item in Dust Bowl Chokes is the fucking flog. Hear me out, listen to me for a second. 
This is a temporary placement. The number one thing that I fucking hate about the flog is that it only takes 300 damage to get the crits. You can cycle crits so fucking often with this thing, especially if you equip the Scorch Shot, that you don't even need Air Blast because you just constantly have crits at your disposal. And it's insanely good on maps that have choke points where you can hide out, spam Scorch Shot flares, and just melt the entire team. I've never been a fan of this weapon. I've never enjoyed any version of the weapon that they've had in the game, the reworks, the nerfs, the adjustments, I've never ever liked it. It's always been stupid fucking strong or absolutely fucking useless. This is the most polarizing weapon in the Pyro's arsenal. In the instances where it's fucking broken is again on choky maps, if the Pyro has a medic up his ass to where he can't fucking die, so he always has, he's always able to use those crits and melt the enemy team, right? After firing off two or three Scorch Shot shots and charging at that, way oh fuck it's so broken and so brain dead easy to do that but but that's the only time when it's broken if the pyro doesn't have a medic up his ass or if he's not actively playing with his team if the pyro is by himself and he's not able to catch someone off guard with flog crits it fucking sucks because the pyro has to know and time it correctly when he's gonna be able to use those crits without being spotted out by someone on the enemy team because all they have to do is just stand there and then shoot them because guess what, in order to activate the crits, you gotta stand still for a second. There is also the stupid taunt canceling thing. I'm glad you brought that up, Flog Champ. That's the reason why I'm talking about this. Now you brought it up. You can taunt cancel the uh, the stationary Uber thing, but you have to know how to pull it off. And then if you can do it, you have like a brief period of invulnerability while you have the crits. Fix that bug. It's fucking ass to play against. The ultimate counter to the Flog Pyro is to just shoot the Flog Pyro because there's nothing he can do. He can't air blast you away to fuck up your aim. He can't air blast your projectiles so he doesn't take damage. All you gotta do is just shoot the flucking, the flucking flog pyro, the fucking flog pyro. If you are aware of the pyro's presence and there isn't a medic in his ass, the flog is useless. Sometimes, fucking rework it, fix it. Other times, it's it's somewhere down here. So I'm gonna meet in the middle. I'm gonna meet in the middle. I'm gonna put it in C tier. A tweak I would like to see for the flog is just make it take more damage to charge. Bump it to like 450. It, it, it's so easy to build that damage with a scorch shot right now. Make it take 450 damage to charge so you can't cycle crits as often. Or if you're not gonna do that, don't let players be uber charged while the crits are active so they're not fucking invincible and there's nothing Thing you can do about it because it's like having a crits krieg and a flog or sorry a crits krieg and a stock uber at the same time make it so that flog pyros just can't be uber charged i'm going to take like a 60 second break i'm gonna go piss i'm gonna get some water and i'll be right back this video is sponsored by well, it's not really it's not really sponsored by anybody. I don't really seek out sponsors, nor do I care that much. The only ones I get are really weird emails from Japanese MMO companies that basically say, hey, put a 90 second ad in your video and we'll give you like 50 bucks. Wow, that's not really worth my time, nor do I want to advertise what's effectively malware for a cell phone. So we're going to circumvent that entirely, and I'm just going to ask you guys directly to just show show me if you like my shit if you like my videos then leave a like it shows me that you enjoyed what i make and it encourages me to make more if you want to tear me a new asshole because you don't like something i said in a video of mine then leave a comment that's what the comment section's there for or if you want to really support me in the form of just throwing some money at me then head on over to we'll put the we'll put the logo here i'll do the stupid gimmick bullshit ah ah he's a generic youtuber we'll put the logo here there it is Support me on Patreon if you want to. The full uncut live streams for these tier lists are going to be exclusively available to my patrons and people inside of my Discord for about a few months after the last one goes up. So if you want to get your hands on that early, then uh, it's five bucks. Or if you don't, then hey, that's totally fine. Just you watching the video is already more than enough, and I'm glad you're enjoying it so far, if you are. If not, then why are you still here? So yeah, all the links for all of that stuff, including social media bullshit, is in the description below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the shit show.
Volcano, let's do the Volcano Fragment. Volcano Fragment is kind of in the same territory as the Stock Fire Axe. It's in the same territory as the Hot Hand. There's nothing wrong with it. It functions as advertised. It has, what, a 20% damage penalty? And it deals full afterburn when you land a swing. Actually, you know, it, I would say it's better than the Stock Fire Axe because it, it, it over the long term does more damage than the Stock Fire Axe. And if you land consecutive swings, it automatically makes it better. So there's that too. But it's not, as, it's not nearly as good as these options. Inside of normal play, it's just really not that impactful. Every other melee option, aside from, you know, the stuff below it, is going to be a better choice. But there is the thing in medieval mode this thing is basically just a straight upgrade because you have random crits with this fucking thing and you set people on fire and if you're, and if you're playing with someone who's using the extinguisher you can buddy up and like do a one-two punch so this weapon has its fun moments you can have some fun with it a cool change to this that would make this weapon a lot more interesting to use and perhaps more and more useful is i think make it do stronger afterburn damage like instead of four damage per tick make a deal six damage per tick so you're rewarded more heavily if you actually go out of your way to land a melee swing with it because as it stands right now you're not really gonna do more damage unless someone takes afterburn for long enough to then die or then to then make up for that lost damage but beyond that i'm not sure what else they could do to this thing it's not like it's broken and that it's bad it's just it's just kind of eh, it's just underwhelming it has its, it has its little niche uses and it's kind of it's it's it borders on being c tier but it, it it's it's like high d above stock fire x that's basically it okay let's do let's do the home record which is basically just the mall and the home record itself so let's can i can i put you there Home wrecker, there you are. So home wrecker and mall. The home wrecker is way is is objectively better than the neon annihilator because you can one shot sappers off of buildings and that's it. I mean that's why that's why you're using this weapon is to be Pybro, right? You're there to puppy guard your engineer. A lot of people seem to forget that the home wrecker can two shot any building in the game. So if you get the jump on a sentry gun with an Uber charge or if you like manage to land on it with something like the the thermal thruster, you can just swing twice and take down a level three. And yeah, you can one tap many centuries too there's that as well a lot of people don't use it for that reason i almost never see the home wrecker being used against buildings yeah getting close to an uh, getting close to an active century as pyro not easy and also yeah pyro isn't a good anti-century class the century is the anti-pyro thing it gives the pyro something to use against buildings i mean if you want to fuck over a teleporter here and there and fuck over a dispenser here and there yeah you can do that but how often are people going out of their way to take down a building with the home record you just don't see it everyone's using this to be pyro and to knock off savers from buildings that's it but it's good it's a good item you know what you know what i'm gonna bump it i'm gonna bump it i'm gonna put this in beat here aside from the extinguisher and the power jack this is the next option you should choose all right what next guys choose choose for me what next all right panic attack is fucking amazing on pyro it's if you're not if you're playing in a server you know it's, it's just always good on pyro here's why it's a direct upgrade to shotgun on pyro because pyro most of the time is going to be close to his target you're already going to be in that medium to close range because you're using your flamethrower and you're following up with a shotgun with the faster switch speed and the fixed bullet spread which really only makes a difference on servers that have random bullet spread enabled panic attack is always so fucking good because you're always within that effective range where the the extra damage from this thing is going to come into play it's easy the best shotgun for pyro hands down Ooh, ooh. is the panic attack better than the flare gun both of these are on, are on the same playing field you can you can make the argument that one is better than the other but each one just keeps catching up with the other so they're they're right smack in the middle they're 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 both on the same level easy stock shotgun stock shotgun is another weapon that's just good on pyro right it's nothing fantastic it's no flare gun it's no panic attack right you had it's just your usual bread and butter yes it's good yes you're gonna be effective with it it's all reliable it's all reliable you're gonna be able to be good with the shotgun actually you know what I'm changing my mind. Panic attack is better than the flare gun because you can fucking kill other pyros with it. Panic attack is better than stock flare gun, but only for that reason. Now, back stock shotgun, it's just good. It can deal with other pyros. It has that same reliable, consistent damage on servers with no bullet spread. It's just solid.
Reserve Shooter. I think Reserve Shooter on Pyro is D. If you're gonna go for a gun that has faster switching speed, then just use the Panic Attack. And you're gonna have two extra shots, and you're gonna have faster switching speed than this thing, and you're gonna do more damage at close range. The old version of this item was up here. The old Reserve Shooter, when paired with the old Air Blast, was broken. It, it was fucking awful to fight against, because a Pyro could just lock someone in air, keep them there, and, keep, and then just keep popping them for like 112 over and over again. It was fucking awful to fight against but then they nerfed it and now it's down here for pyro you could make the it, it's just it's just a diet panic attack a lot of people have suggested that the reserve shooter should be reverted back to its old version now that they've reworked the air blast and i completely disagree because you can still pop people into the air relatively easily with the new air blast because either you look up or you do a quick look down you do a quick switch and then boom you have 112 immediately i still think that would be too strong it's a it's slightly hard it's slightly more challenging to pull off the amount of air time they have will let you pull off not one shot but two shots you know it still deal a lot of damage so right now this weapon as it stands is infinitely better on soldier but we'll get to that when we ever when we, whenever we get to the soldier tier list reserve shooter d tier it's it's sticking around down there okay next detonator detonator detonator's fun the detonator is really awesome for mobility. It lets you be a fucking menace because you can set people on fire from a distance with this thing. You can do a flare jump and then follow up with an extinguisher swing. You can be really fucking flashy with the detonator. Somewhat decent crowd control capability because you can set multiple people on fire. It's not a good combo weapon unless you're using it with the, something like the extinguisher. So it's nowhere near as good as a flare gun because it its base damage is lower and, and then the mini crit damage is still fairly low the mobility it grants is second to none and you can pull off really cool shit with it but it takes a lot of work you have to put in a fuckload of effort in order to be effective with this thing right you have to be in the upper echelon of skill in tf2 to be effective to be really effective with a detonator otherwise you're just using this thing for flare spam okay man melter i'm gonna put you down here bud the man melter at a concept is awesome i love the idea of exchanging extinguishes for stored crits but this weapon is so fucking buggy if this weapon didn't have any bugs it'd be up here it, it would be next to the detonator but this weapon has so many bugs that it prevents it from being good the first bug is that you can't tell when you're actively extinguishing people with it it has a little i made a video about this it has a little animation that's supposed to play that looks like you're sucking the fire off people but most of the time that effect doesn't work so you can't tell like when you're it's like okay i know i'm hitting mouse too but is, is this actually working it throws you off right the second bug with this thing is that whenever you fire a crit shot you flashbang yourself you blind yourself with the same animation that plays when you extinguish someone with this thing and you can't it fucks with your aim it's like whoa i can't fucking see now did i hit did i miss it's horrible the only way you can tell if you hit is if you hear the crit sound and you see the damage counter pop off right the only way you can tell that you've like actively reloaded with this thing is if you hear the like little ping when you pull it out i don't i don't i don't like that i i, I think it needs a more noticeable signal that it's ready to fire again those bugs really hold this weapon back and if those bugs weren't there easy easy right next to the detonator next let's do the back scratcher so the back scratcher it lets a pyro be a lot more independent if you don't have a medic on your team just always use this you deal more damage you get more health from health packs right but as soon as you have a medic on your team that's actively healing people then never use this there's no point because you can't be healed and if you're going to be doing extra damage just use this instead unless you're the kind of pyro that's always flanking that's always like overextending and playing away from your team then this is something you're going to want to use because if you get caught out then you can get to a health pack and you know increase your chances of surviving 248 damage on crit yeah it's it's it is overkill it's really strong but only if there's random crits to use right back scratchers just it's good it has its uses but it's you know it's overshadowed by the extinguisher whenever there's a medic on the team unless you're just overextending and playing by yourself let's do my 
favorite. Let's do my favorite pyro weapon. Let's talk about the Dragon's Fury. Do I need to talk about the Dragon's Fury? I just made a video about it. You know why it's good. It's so satisfying to use. It fucking chews through people. It's so good against Scout. It's so good against Heavy. Oh man, it's so fucking fun to play with. I love, love this fucking item. It is so fucking fun. God, this weapon is so hideously underrated. I would consider it up here. Like if it didn't have the bugs that I mentioned before, right? If it didn't have the issues with collisions on certain map elements, then this weapon would be better than the flare gun and the panic attack. But th those couple of little bugs and the issues with dynamic lighting it has where, yeah, where it flashbangs people. If it didn't have those, oh man, it, it would be so much higher in the A tier list. Please, God, give me a strange version. I need a strange version of this weapon now. Okay, let's do... Let's do the back burner. The back burner is interesting because the back burner is really good. Yeah, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put back burner at the top of B tier. I'm gonna put it there. You know why? Because it's downside of of the stronger air blast penalty. I noticed doesn't make that huge of a difference. It only makes it's only a significant problem if you're playing on really big maps that aren't payload. Because there's fallen ammo kits everywhere. You have the payload card to play with. If you have an engineer on your team, you have a dispenser to use. If you know where ammo packs are you can always make use of them it's pretty fucking strong the only time this weapon sucks is when you're caught out alone you have ammo for like one air blast and then you use that air blast and then you're fucked because you've got like 38 ammo left and you're caught out by yourself so you gotta bail out and find more ammo or you die fighting until your flames run out in those rare instances when you're caught out with no ammo you fucking die yeah if you have a good sense of ammo management and you can time your air blast really well back burner really fucking good and also the crits are a little bit janky. The hitbox on that's funky. It, it, it's not consistent, but sometimes it plays in your favor to the point like, did that really need to count as a crit? It flip flops back and forth between the, crit, the crits not working and then the crits working. It's weird. And yeah, if you pair it with like the thermal thruster, which I guess we'll talk about next, then this thing becomes a bit more of a fucking menace. The thermal thruster is interesting. I'm going to probably, I'm going to put it at the top of C tier. The thermal thruster is interesting. You can do a lot with the thermal thruster. It increases the pyro's mobility by a ridiculous amount. The only problem with this weapon is that the switching speed on it fucking sucks cock. Unless you perfectly time your weapon switches after you get up off the ground so you can have your flamethrower out by the time you land again this thing sucks you're not able to attack again by the time you land unless you're doing like a more of a horizontal jump to bail out if you're doing like a high vertical jump to get the jump on someone then kind of like pop down on their head to attack them then you gotta time the weapon switching speed but otherwise it's just so painfully slow and the recharge time on it too i think it's okay maybe speed it up a little bit and this i think is far more situational than the detonator is because the detonator can you can pretty much use it and be effective with it at any time the thermal thruster is only good when you know you can get the jump on somebody and come up come up on them from behind while you have the high ground if the player is seeing you jump with the thermal thruster you're sitting duck right because they're just going to shoot at you in the air when you're in the air you can't retaliate at all like a soldier can if he's air if he's, if he's rocket jumping right he can shoot down rockets on somebody if you're a fucking pyro you're fucked it's only good when they don't know you're there so oh, there's so many things that counter this item that counter this item's mobility that it prevents it from being better than a c tier like a high c tier but you can still pull off a lot of crazy fucking shit with it I'm seeing overwhelming decisions for the third degree. Okay, so third degree. Oh man, I'm gonna put you here. I'm gonna put third degree at the top of C tier. If you have random crits enabled, this thing is fucking awesome to play with because you one shot medics through the medi beam and man, that is just, oh, it's so satisfying, man. And if you fuck over a vaccinator medic with this thing, Oh, it's so good. And of course, yeah, it's a direct upgrade to stock. But without random crits, the situational viability of this weapon really just keeps it held back from being a better item. But it's still so much fun to play with. It's so, it's it's like a borderline gimmick niche strategy weapon, right? It, it's 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 like a situational gimmick weapon because you can still be really effective with it. You know, if you get if you get two swings off on the medic and he's and he has less than if he has anything less than 130 health, he's 
fucked. It is so fun to use this thing. The third degree is my favorite pyro melee, hands down. I love using this thing. I almost always run it because just on that off chance, you can kill a medic to the medi beam and they flip out because they never see anyone use this item and they fucking die to it. And they go, what the fuck just happened? I'm gonna say the same thing I said in my video. A slight damage penalty against players who aren't being healed by a medic and then a slight damage bonus against players who are being healed by a medic. That's the way to tweak this item. Then this thing is fucking great. And then remove random crits on it. It shouldn't, this thing should not have random crits, period. God, I love the fucking third degree. It's despite how, it, yeah, just, just, you know, you know, you know, you know. Okay, last but not least, we have this piece of shit. I fucking hate this weapon. This weapon is so painfully brain dead easy to use. It's awful to play against. It, it, this thing requires no effort to do a terrible amount, like a ridiculous amount of damage, right? It's objectively the best flamethrower for pyro because of its ease of use and how much damage you can do. And, and it makes it easier for you to use because it has the stun lock. If you land a direct hit with this thing, it pretty much guarantees that the mini crit's gonna hit the same guy. And if anyone's nearby, they're all gonna get set on fire too, and it has a blast radius. And you can flare jump with it, not as high as the detonator, but you can flare jump with it. It destroys sticky bombs. Why? It's one of the weapons that is in most need of a nerf in this game. I think remove the stun lock on this thing. This thing should not be a hard stun on players. It kills momentum. It doesn't kill directionality, but it kills momentum. And it sucks because it pops you in the air like the old air blast did and makes you a sitting duck to everything else that's around you. You're fucking screwed when you're hit by this thing in the presence of multiple enemy players. You're fucked, you're just gonna die. And the amount of damage it does is one shot from this thing does more damage than any other pyro primary, assuming you get hit by the secondary flare hit. I say keep the double hit but don't make it guaranteed by the stun lock. Oh, then what about air blast? Air blast is not nearly as bad of a stun lock as it used to be, and it has limited range. Infinite range, guarantees a second hit, high amount of damage, you can jump with it, and it destroys sticky bombs, does too much, it's way too fucking good, made a video talking about this thing ad nauseum, nerf it. One direct hit, 126 damage you can one-shot a light class. Oh yeah, and it ignites the player for full afterburn. Oh, you don't even have to land a direct hit on them for it to ignite full afterburn. Fuck, that's broken. Nerve this thing, fuck! If I went back and I remade my pyro video, the, the scorch shot video, it would be exactly the same, except I would be even more angry about it. Fuck this item, fuck it, fuck it. Fucking hate it. I think we're done. We did it, guys. First tier list done. After looking at this tier list, I'm really surprised how good it is. Honestly, I feel like a lot of people would agree on this. It's my totally objective tier list, man. That's it.